Good morning to all of you guys, gals, and non binary pals. It is your host, Athena Sarmiento, and welcome back to another show of Whitney High Live. So tomorrow marks the first day of April, and as you guys may not know, April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month. Because of this, the students in Mr. Heck's Digital Arts and Communications classes have worked very, very hard to create a student-run campaign titled Wildcat Safe Driving Campaign. This campaign raises awareness about the dangers of distracted driving and launches today, March 31st. So with that, here's a video. As part of the Whitney Safe Driving Campaign, we aim to educate students on the dangers of distracted driving and how to prevent the death and tragedies that can be a result of simply driving distracted. With your help, we can make a difference and build up a new generation of safe drivers. 3,142 people. That's the number of people who died from distracted driving in 2019. 33% of all those who died were teens and young adults ages 15 to 29. And most frighteningly, it only takes five seconds of distracted driving to lead to a fatal crash. So next time you think about distracted driving, remember that distractions can wait. Always be watching the road. Be attentive to your surroundings and pedestrians. Be intentional about not having distractions. Take your eyes off the road and be thinking constantly about your next move. Not allowing your mind to wander when the lives of others and yourself are in your hands. Thank you so much. So, brought to you by our very own counselors, here's a video about returning to school. Roll the clip. Hi everyone, I'm Miss V, the wellness counselor here at Whitney High School, and I'm going to be going over wellness support for the hybrid and virtual learning environment. And some things I'm going to be going over are feelings and expectations, um, some common things you could be feeling. Coming back to campus is really excited. Um, we've been away for one whole year and, you know, stepping foot on campus is really exciting. You get to see your friends, you get to see your teachers, staff that have all missed your presence here on campus. And you could be feeling a little nervous and that's okay as well. Remember to practice your coping skills, deep breathing, some type of grounding technique. You know, we're here to support you and make this a safe and smooth process transition to on-campus learning. And also for students that may not be coming back to campus, you could be feeling a little left out. Um, you know, maybe you want to be on campus but can't at this moment and that's okay. Um, you know, we're here to provide the same services for you as we do for students that are here on campus. Some expectations to have when meeting with your wellness counselor. We are currently not meeting with students in our offices. Um, we're doing everything still through Google Meet, um, but we'll meet outside as needed, and Miss Easter will go over that process with you guys. Um, and then our drop-in pro um, process has been a little bit different. Um, we are asking students to ask their teachers for permission to meet with us, and your teacher will call us, and then we will meet us at a designated meeting spot. And then if you are staying home, will my appointment, cha appointment time change? Um, because you're not returning to school, it will not. Appointment times are all the same for everyone across the board, and they're all after instructional time. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Easter, the other wellness counselor. I'm going to be reviewing what you can do to get support should you be in a crisis situation. So a crisis is a response to a very stressful situation where you might feel like you're having a mental or physical breakdown, so to speak. A mental health crisis can look like self-harm, suicide ideation, thoughts of harm to other people, panic attacks, or sometimes even psychosis. Ms. B and I are available to support you whether you're in a virtual setting or you're in school in a hybrid setting. If you're on, in school and you're in a crisis situation, please let your teacher know, and then they'll give us a call and you would go ahead and walk over to the College and Career Center and Ms. B or myself will meet you there. In a virtual setting, if you're in a crisis, please let your teacher know and either email Ms. B or myself, and then we will support you. However, if you're having active thoughts of suicide or having difficulty coping with emotions, please call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room if it's a medical or life-threatening uh, mental health-related emergency. You can also call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, the LA County DMH Access Hotline, Trevor Lifeline, or you can also text the crisis text line for support. Hello everyone, this is Ms. Williams, the 7th and 8th grade counselor to talk about counseling and wellness services. 
So your counselors will be continuing to host virtual counseling services for all students, regardless of which model you're at. And so this includes individual and virtual meetings, um, requesting a wellness check-in for yourself or a friend, and we have a link to that form, and access to tons of resources on our Wellness Google Classroom for high school students and middle school students. Um, wellness support will still be available, so you can schedule a meeting with our fabulous wellness counselors, Ms. B and Ms. Easter, um, to talk about a variety of things such as stress, anxiety, lack of sleep, fear, sadness, and peer conflict. And if you need some academic support, whether you're going to be online or vert or hybrid, um, you can meet with Ms. Alves, Ms. Diaz, or myself, and you can just send us an email either with your questions or to schedule that meeting. Thank you so much, Wildcats. Thank you so much, Whitney counselors. Next is a video from Digital Media Club. Roll the clip. What is Digital Media Club? Digital Media Club is a special interest club that covers a variety of aspects of digital media, ranging from esports to art to game design. It is unique in that we focus on the community rather than planning a set list of activities, and we adapt each month's plan to what the members would enjoy the most, which we gauge through surveys. We're all about improving our skills and having fun in art, game design, and esports, but we also want to foster a healthy community united around shared interests. I've been with the club for about four years, and I can say that there's been a lot to experience every year, so be sure to check us out. Hello everybody, my name is Leo Garcia Larry, and as some of you may know, I am the co-president of the Digital Media Club, as well as the head of the game design section. So what do we do in game design? Well, I could just say game design, but that's not very specific. Right now, what we're trying to go over is actually game design theory. We want to try and go over what sells a game, what makes a game good, what makes a game bad, and basically, how do you put a game together? But it's not just going to be that. We of course also want students to be able to get a hands-on experience with making a game themselves, whether it be by themselves or with other people, so like a group. Um, on top of this, we are also going to be planning on making workshops in which we will go over things regarding game design, such as making sprites, animations, music, and so on and so forth. Um, so, if you're interested, we will, we will be having meetings every Tuesday at 4 p.m., the last about an hour. And I hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Rosie, and I'm on the Art Heads for DMC. We have our meetings every Thursday on Discord, where we are in the process of making an animation called Yarn Cat. We also play a lot of fun art-related activities such as Scribblio and Draw Battle, so if you like digital art, feel free to come and join us. Hi, I'm Henrik, one of the heads of eSports. What the eSports branch is about is by using various games and events to increase the sense of community in the club and to help one another approve. One of these set events is our League of Legends tournament this Friday on April 2nd, 3pm. If you find that interesting or anything else I've said, you can check that out on our Discord. So yeah, hope to see you there. Also make sure to come to our Gobetown fundraiser from 11am to 10pm at this video's location. You can support us by showing the graphic or saying you're from Digital Media Club. You can find that graphic as well as our campaign week on our Instagram at Whitney High School DMC. If you want to keep up our events, make sure to join our Discord and we'll put the link above. Don't be afraid to join because art is a science. Thank you so much Digital Media Club. Now, up next we have a very important topic brought to you by Eli Bertel. Ranking bread. Check it out. This is Top 10 with Eli, and today I'm giving you my top 10 kinds of bread. Let's get started. Number 10, mozzarella breadsticks has to be with the marinara sauce. Number 9, Lee Sandwich's baguette. Only $1.50 and it's best when it's fresh. Number 8, a warm croissant because it's soft and warm. Number 7, Costco pizza crust. I think the best type of pizza is Costco pizza because it's nice and soft and warm and chewy. And number six, you have garlic knots, which are Italy's cinnamon rolls. Number five, sourdough bread bowl, the only acceptable form of sourdough. It's very versatile, and you could use it for soup and mac and cheese, specifically California Adventures clam chowder. Number four, you have Trader Joe's brioche bread. It would be ranked higher if it wasn't so annoying to peel off the wrapper. 
Number three, you have artisano bread. Great sandwich bread. You can get it at Costco or any store. Uh, number two, you have bagels. They're great with anything, cream cheese, toasted, sliced. Specifically, I love Cassidy's Corner Joe's Special. I get it on a Parmesan bagel. The Joe's Special has egg, bacon, cheese, jalapeno cream cheese, and lemon pepper. Trust me, it's great. It's in Lakewood on Del Amo by Haskell. And number one, you have Cheesecake Factory brown bread with butter. If you've been to Cheesecake Factory, you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to say anything more. Thank you. Once again, that was Top 10 with Eli. Bread, let me know what Top 10 you'd like to see next. Lastly, to wrap up our show today, we have me showing you guys some helpful Google Chrome extensions for the school year. Check it out. What's up guys? It's Athena here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys some helpful Google Chrome extensions that students and even teachers can both use. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to have to show you guys is how to get to the Chrome Web Store. This is where you'll find all of your extensions. I'm going to be opening up Google here. And as you can see, this is my bookmarks tab. I'm going to click on apps on the far left and click Web Store. This is how you get to the Chrome Web Store. So the first extension that I will be showing you guys is an extension called Momentum. So as you can see, this is what the extension looks like. Once you open a new tab, it will look like this every time should you use this extension. Um, as you can see, the time is right here. You have the option to change it to the 24 hour clock. And down here, it asks you what your main focus is for today. You can put anything you'd like. Um, and once you do that, it's gonna show up as a little task bar. And then once you're done with that, you can just click it and you're good. If you have more things to do that day, which you know obviously most people do, on the bottom right corner, there is a to do button that you can click here, you click to do, and you can write down anything that you need to do other than your main focus that you wrote in the layout. So the next extension that you guys can use is one called a Google Dictionary by Google. Basically, what Google Dictionary does is that for every article that you see and you see a word that you don't know or you need the definition of really quickly, you can just double tap on the word, it highlights it for you, and it shows you the definition right at the top. Okay, so I have an article right here and say I don't know what the word fidgety means. What I can do is double tap it here and it says the definition for each word that I decide to highlight. This works for any word here as you can tell. Okay, so the next extension is one called Digo and basically what this extension does is once you have an article pulled up and you need to highlight or just keep track of what you think as you're reading the passage, you can annotate it right there. Okay, so how to use Digo, what I'm going to be doing is highlighting the article right here. Three icons show up, I'm going to click on the pencil. It gives me four options of colors to use. This will help for organization and color coding that way. Um, and once I do, I'm going to click on the highlight again and click on the little text box here and here I can input my notes on the article. And last but not least, I'm going to be showing you guys some quick and easy tips besides Chrome extensions that you can use for Google Chrome. So what Google is allowing you to do is put your tabs into groups so you can categorize what your tabs are about and also declutter your space. Okay, so what you are going to do for this is you're going to click on the tab that you want. Go ahead and right click it, click add tab to new group and it's going to ask you to name this group. And once you do that, you have the option to change it to any of these colors. And right here, you can add whichever other tab pertains to that category. Um, once you do that, you can then just click on the title that you gave that group, click it and all of the tabs don't go away, but they do get hidden. And once you need to open those tabs again, you can just open it up with the same clicking title option and they'll be right there at your disposal. Last but not least is a search engine called Google Scholar. So if you don't know what Google Scholar is already, it is basically a search engine that Google provides for all academic published works. So you never have to worry about unreliable sources when doing any research projects and stuff. And the articles that it will show you are all from scholarly publishers or academic writings. And those are all of the extensions that I have to show you guys today. If you guys want any more, make sure to let us know. Bye-bye. And with that, that is all that we have for the show today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, we have a couple more days till spring break, so make sure to hang on in there. Make sure to stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.